This year has been pretty rough, and while gaming offered a good escape for a large number of people, there were more than a few things to get annoyed about. Let's take a look at 15 things gamers hated about 2020, from the typical to the unexpected. Delays Some titles like Cyberpunk 2077 saw multiple delays, while others like Dying Light 2 don't even have a release window. A number of titles and updates were also hilariously delayed from their original dates to avoid competition with Cyberpunk 2077, whether it's Everspace 2 Early Access or the start of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Season 1. Buggy Launches Regardless of how much fun they end up being, a number of major titles suffered from some pretty hefty bugs this year. Assassin's Creed Valhalla shipped with its fair number of Ubisoft brand glitches. Watch Dogs Legion had a nasty progression wiping bug on Xbox Series X that's yet to be fixed. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War has been crash prone, among other issues. And the less said about Marvel's Avengers, the better. Yes, things will improve with time, but it's a nuisance all the same. FIFA 21 on Switch for all of the good it's done over the past year or so, delivering not one, but two great Star Wars titles, Electronic Arts' FIFA strategy still leaves much to be desired. Leaving aside problems on other platforms, FIFA 21 on the Nintendo Switch hit a new low by being virtually identical to last year's game, which was also fairly poor. It still has the latest roster and kit updates for those who need their fix, but you might as well just stick with FIFA 20 at this rate. Lack of Next-Gen Upgrades Whatever your stance on next-gen upgrades for various titles, their absence, whether in free or paid form, definitely drew backlash. Some, like Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered, reached a middle ground with save transfer and new suits being available for PS4 players. Others, like Control Ultimate Edition, continue to remain contentious, especially when next-gen upgrades were mistakenly enabled for owners of the base game, which the publisher initially claimed wasn't possible. PS5 and Xbox Series X pre-order debacles Sony's PS5 pre-order debacle may have received the most attention, but the situation around both consoles has been a mess at best. From overloaded retail sites and cancelled pre-orders, to consoles arriving late and PS5 units being replaced with different items on delivery. It was rough for both fandoms, and that doesn't even factor into all of the scalpers. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War on Current Gen Consoles Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War offers a fun campaign and zombies mode. However, there are a number of major bugs and issues like crashes in zombies, lack of content in multiplayer, balance issues, skill-based matchmaking, and so on. Perhaps the worst is that it's straight up crashing Xbox Series X consoles and the only temporary fix is to either have the correct version installed or disable ray tracing. PS5 users aren't safe either. A Reddit user claimed that it straight up bricked the console, necessitating a replacement. Again, while a fix will come sooner or later, it's something that you shouldn't have to deal with, especially for a $70 game. Skill-based matchmaking To be clear, skill-based matchmaking, when done well, isn't inherently a bad thing. Problems arise though when A, it varies wildly from match to match, resulting in you either stomping or getting stomped, and B, a game's core progression relies on you playing relatively well. Whether it's accepted or not, there's no denying that skill-based matchmaking continues to be a hotly debated topic, especially with how Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War implements it. Cheaters in Party Games Cheaters suck in just about any game, but why would anyone cheat in games like Among Us which saw an astronomical rise this year? These are meant to be fun, light-hearted games where playing on a level field adds to the fun. Maybe it's just the desire to run roughshod on unsuspecting players, or to win at any cost, but it just makes no sense whatsoever. $70 Games Players have been dreading a price increase for games, and this year, it finally happened with some full-priced, big-budget games being priced at $70 for Xbox Series X and S and PS5. The reasons, from data suggesting that an increase was a given after all these years to justify cost of development, were diverse, but reactions remained mixed. It also doesn't help that titles like Godfall and Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War are priced as such despite having so many issues. Microtransactions in $70 Games Of course, it also doesn't help that despite games increasing in price, many companies are happy to keep plugging in microtransactions. NBA 2K21 is the biggest offender by far, due to its multitude of microtransactions, but even upcoming PS5 titles like Destruction All-Stars aren't exempt. 
Time will tell if more companies hop onto the bandwagon, but either way, it's truly the worst of both worlds. Limited Time Game Releases Fear of Missing Out, or FOMO, is a manipulative but ultimately effective marketing tactic that video games have used for years. Nintendo is no stranger to this with its mobile titles, but this year saw it experimenting with limited time full priced releases. Want to pick up Super Mario 3D All Stars, the long awaited collection of 3D Mario titles for the Switch? Well, you'd better do so by March 31st, 2021, because it'll be gone after that, both physically and digitally. Scummy as it was to do this for driving up sales, it was a success with the collection selling over 5.21 million units worldwide in just 12 days. Platform Exclusive Anything Exclusives are always a contentious matter, but with the newest console war beginning this year, fans' ire over exclusivity boiled over. PlayStation players got Zombies Onslaught and Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War for a year, with Spider-Man in Marvel's Avengers and titles like Final Fantasy XVI being exclusive. On the other hand, Microsoft's acquisition of Bethesda opens up the prospect of Starfield and The Elder Scrolls VI being exclusive to Xbox, if not having the best versions. This was all before either console even launched, so who knows what the coming years could hold. Xbox Series X and PS5 Performance Blame it on all the marketing hype surrounding 4K-capable consoles, but not everyone was happy with the performance of some titles on Xbox Series X and PS5. Yakuza Like a Dragon was criticized for only running at 1440p 60fps on Xbox Series X, while Watch Dogs Legion and Assassin's Creed Valhalla reportedly offered dynamic 4K on both consoles. Graphical quality is higher and performance is often better than previous gen versions, but again, thanks to all the hype, some felt annoyed on not receiving their promised 4K 60fps performance for all titles. PS5 Size Say what you will about the PS5's design, whether it looks futuristic or like a fancy router, but one thing that many took issue with was its size. It's absolutely massive, and while this may not be a problem for someone with a desktop setup, home theater setups faced issues. Some were content to simply keep it behind their TVs, which is kind of funny when you consider how Sony wanted the console to be the centerpiece of one's living room. But hey, at least it's relatively quiet and has effective cooling. Terrible remasters and remakes while this year saw some great remasters and remakes, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Mafia Definitive Edition, Black Mesa, Demon Souls, and Command & Conquer Remastered come to mind, the terrible ones stood out as well. Warcraft 3 Reforged, 13 Remake, and Mafia 2 and 3 Definitive Edition were simply terrible, trampling all over players' fond memories of the original games. One can only hope that this new generation brings better remasters, if nothing else. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.